The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Susan Salcedo, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I am so delighted to welcome our guest today, Leanne Luongo, who's the Executive Director of the Orchid Children's Art Foundation. Leanne, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me here. I'm really excited to have you share a bit about OCAF, as everybody calls it, the Orchid Children's Art Foundation, but would love to start and talk about you and your okay. childhood and where you grew up. So let's start there. Okay. I am the oldest of four children. Mm -hmm. I was born in beautiful Maine, raised in New Hampshire. Uh, my entire family actually still lives back there. Mm -hmm. My mother lives on the lake in Maine. I have a brother in Massachusetts and a sister in New Hampshire. So Was yeah. it an idyllic childhood it just seems beautiful it was wonderful it, it was, was it? wonderful if you love snow mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't but <laughs> I do um, snowmobiling sledding ice skating you know swimming in the uh, ocean in the summertime mm. which is difficult to do out here in That's California right. so hiking in the mountains it's just uh, it's beautiful sounds I loved like you're outside a lot for outside your all the time mm -hmm. all the time you with your four older siblings three three older siblings Correct. excuse me yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you're outside all the time yes. very good and so did you attend elementary junior high and high school Maine New Hampshire area in all in New Hampshire okay. yes I did mm -hmm. yep. and describe a little bit about how you were as a student uh, well, I was probably more into the arts than the academic portion uh -huh. of school, uh, which is what probably drove me to OCAF um, as well. But I love hands-on, mm -hmm. um, and I took a, a ceramics class, mm -hmm. and I just loved it, excelled in that. Mm -hmm. um, I also uh, excelled in volleyball. So mm -hmm. academically... I was missing mm -hmm. a few pieces there, <laughs> but I found my niche in the arts and a passion for it, and it um, helped with my self-confidence, mm -hmm. my self-esteem, and I also had a father who was a school teacher who pushed me to do what I love, but also pushed me to, you know, do well in school, yes. pass and everything. Absolutely. But it was a struggle mm -hmm. for me. Well, I think that's really important, and thanks for sharing <clears throat> that, because mm -hmm. not every child in our schools here love the academic portion of Correct. the school. I mean, some do, some flourish, but not everybody. Correct. And it's so important to have something, something that really engages them in their heart and their minds. And for you, there was arts mm -hmm. um, and for many students it, thankfully for OCAP there's arts at or in the Orchid, uh, school district but there's also sports as you said volleyball was something that you loved and Absolutely. again you you can play unless you have a pretty good academic score so I'm right. sure there was a motivating factor yes. there too yes yeah. and you mentioned Leanne ceramics was that a high school class that you had um actually I had one and I was fortunate to have one in elementary school Wonderful. at Horn Street where I grew up um you know, we did everything by hand. We didn't have the wheel at the time, but it just, um, it empowered me um, watching something, you know, a little ball turn into a, a vase or a bowl that I could bring home to my mother and father. It just empowered me. So that's where my passion came for that. And then in high school, I did have ceramics. I took it for three years in high school. Wow, how so, wonderful yeah. to have ceramics for three years in high three school, years, that's great. Yes. So let's talk about where you went to college and what you majored in. Okay, so I actually went to uh, Botter Fashion College in Miami mm -hmm. and uh, majored in fashion. <laughs> how was that? Lo and behold, it, it, was, it was interesting. I mean, I love clothes, I love fashion, mm -hmm. I love shopping. But ultimately, it wasn't satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. um, I needed something that um, I could give back 
more. Right, which Thank definitely you. leads you to where you are today and even other positions that you've had as well, Correct. which which I'd love to talk about. And so I'll see if this is the right question here, which is, did you leave um, Miami, for Florida, at that point, after during uh, fashion school to California, was that the trek out? No, no okay. I, I when I left uh, college in Miami, mm -hmm. I went back home ah. to uh, New Hampshire, and I, I met my husband and got married and mm -hmm. <laughs> had children. And uh, my husband, who had a job for a long time, was got laid off mm -hmm. heating and oil, and so his sister happened to live in California. And she said, come on out, you know, I'll help you guys get on your feet. So that's what brought us to California. And how was the difference in terms of your, you know, you had snow, you just talked about all the outdoor. What did you think about the West Coast? I was scared to death mm -hmm. because I came from a very small town in New Hampshire. You know, I'd never seen L.A. traffic before. It really frightened me. And I really missed my family. Mm -hmm. I have to say that for the first month I was very unhappy mm -hmm. and I wanted to go home and I didn't give it a chance. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful mentor, uh, my sister-in-law, who took me under her wing and she was the CEO of nonprofit and said, I want you to come in here and volunteer and, you know, give back and I, I think this will help you. Mm -hmm. And so that started my journey in the nonprofit world in California. I love that story. So share sure. a little bit about the different nonprofits that you have, just a few that you've worked in sure. up to now. So I spent 20 years at uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of Monterey County. Mm -hmm. I was in development. I was a nutrition coordinator. I did uh, manage uh, special events for them. I taught program services. I did the USDA summer food service program. So all aspects of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, my husband was transferred with his job, and so we moved up to Oxnard, at which time I took a position at Rubicon Theatre Company, which wow. was incredible. So Wonderful. And what did you do there? I was development, uh -huh. in development, so fundraising and special events as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. opening nights. I just am fascinated, Leanne, because if, and we're going to talk about your OCAF executive directorship mm -hmm. in a moment here, but I'm just going to say it seems like everything is sprinkled into it because of the yes. development work, your love of the arts, your love of the, you know, uh, singing to the, to the heart of youth, um, making sure that everyone has something that they're passionate in while they're in school. Everything is just really wrapped into this. Absolutely. Seems like to me. It, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> seems like to me. And um, <clears throat> going back just for a moment, the 20 years in Monterey, that's with your sister-in-law, her support in terms of her Correct. Yeah, Correct. bridging you yes, there. Yes, I started as a volunteer and, and they hired me three months later. Wow. And I spent 20 years there. When I had to leave, it was it was hard. Really hard to yeah. go. And Monterey is an area that has, people might assume that there aren't huge challenges in Monterey because we often see it as the Bay and all of these wonderful Correct. glacial places and yet it's a, a, a county, an area that has significant needs. So I'm Absolutely. sure the work that you had was extremely impactful. Absolutely. Our Boys and Girls Club was located in Salinas mm -hmm. and Seaside, yep. a very high concentration of socioeconomically disadvantaged families. Mm -hmm. um, so we catered to, to them. And uh, but the support system, as far as Monterey, Carmel, Pebble Beach, yeah. um, they're incredible. You Wonderful. know, they support all of those kids and allow the Boys and Girls Club to do what they do. Yes. And that's, you know, empower and pack those kids. And we also had a wonderful fine arts program there as well. That's great. Yeah. So then how did this position <clears throat> open itself up for you? What happened? So I, my husband uh, works with um, a gentleman at the water company and they were having a birthday party and I happened to attend the birthday party and uh, Trish Waterbury, who's on our board of directors, had asked me what I had done for a living. I said, fundraising, development, and she's like, oh, I'm working on a gala, you know, for OCAF. I'd love to have you on my team. And I said, absolutely, love to help you. And she also said, our executive director has just resigned. I think you'd be a good fit. So she gave me the job description and uh, I applied for it and met with the board and was hired a couple days later. Wow. And just went right to work. <laughs> yeah, That's incredible. So. 
Talk about right place, right time. Correct. Yeah, yes. and right person. Really. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was a match yeah. all the way around. Right, and I knew I wanted to stay in nonprofit. Yes. My goodness, it all yeah. came together. Absolutely. All right, so now let's talk about OCAF, the okay. Orchid Children's Art Foundation. Yes. And you do, it does, the organization, and you do so much. But let's talk about some of the ways in which it supports Orchid School District. Oh, it supports Orchid School District in so many ways. We fund uh, band instruments. We fund Arts Attack for all children grades K through 6. And that's about $10,000 a year in art supplies. Mm -hmm. We fund special teacher grants. So every month the teacher can apply for a special teacher's grant. It can be a trip to PCPA or the museum or a special art project they want to work on. We fund that. We fund band uniforms. Uh, we fund ORF instruments. Yeah, we fund a lot. Quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. And is it um, OCAF, I, I, I'm assuming yes, but I just want to make sure that OCAF is really connected only with Orchid Union School District. Correct. Right? Okay, so yes. that is its arts wing and arm. That's correct. Yeah. And it's very unusual for a school district to have an arts foundation to fund all of these programs. It's incredible. It is. Um, as I have with uh, Dr. Blow, who's the superintendent, mm -hmm. and with different principals. As I've walked through classrooms and see the beautiful artwork mm -hmm. on display, I love seeing the little tags that there often are next to the walls that say this is because of the Orchid Children Arts Foundation. Correct. And it's, it's really beautiful. It brings so much joy um, to the children and to the classrooms in the whole district. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so do you offer programs as well? I, I think you mentioned a few of the programs that are offered. I mean, there's ways in which teachers can access arts um, Correct. But, but is there programming? Yeah, we do not actually run any programming. Mm -hmm. Our main focus is getting all of the programs funded for visual and performing arts. So if there's, for example, in performing arts, um, if they need a new sound system, mm -hmm then my job is to go out and find a grant or find the money for that sound system so that performing arts will be complete. Wow. Or if they need you know, new microphones for The Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. the theater might be going on at that time. So that's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. I like to get the information from the teachers and Dr. Blow as to what the needs are. Mm -hmm. And then I research grants and write grants and try and get all of these things funded. Wow. I want to stop and just say thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. And, you know, us in, in edu we in education, I should say, K-12 education, we, we always feel that we have such an important task in front of us in terms of mm -hmm. educating our youth. Mm -hmm. And we always say we can't do it without our partners. And the work that you're doing, literally you right in front of me doing in terms of uh, finding funding and supporting teachers mm -hmm. with their requests is pretty phenomenal. And it allows teachers in the K-12 system to do what it needs to do. So thank you for doing that. Such a great example. Thank of you, it's my pleasure. Yeah, of, of, of partnership. <clears throat> so you've been, how long have you been executive director of OCAF? Oh, two years in March, actually, just last week. Two wow, years. congratulations. So thank you so much. And have you found that there have been big changes since you started, or maybe there wasn't a need to big, make big changes? How has it gone in your tenure? Um, I have made some big changes. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of came in with some of my ideas from my old job, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, let's, let's uh, step it up a notch mm -hmm. for our gala. Let's have some live entertainment. Let's showcase what the students are doing. For example, you know, we have a wonderful ceramics program. I feel it's important that our donors see where their money goes. Mm -hmm. So I have the students work on ceramics or a special project for our donors mm -hmm. and our sponsors of all of our events. Mm -hmm. And I, I make sure that they each get something from a student. student. Um, because when you can see something tangible mm -hmm. that your money's going to, and you know, that makes a big difference. Absolutely. General operating is impossible to get funded, <laughs> but a wonderful arts program is is not. Yeah, something tangible. Absolutely. For sure. I like that it's bringing back your ceramics background too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where do students, excuse me, where do students in Orchid 
um, take their ceramics courses? Where, what's the facility? So uh, this is actually done at Orchid Academy High School mm -hmm. and a couple of our other schools actually have um, firing and all of that stuff. But mainly it's Donna Kinsey. Mm -hmm. She is a high school teacher. She teaches AP Arts. She's incredible and her students are so talented. Mm -hmm. So every year I give them a project and I give them free reign, you know, paint or draw or whatever creativity comes to mind, you know, here's a plate or here's a vase or here's, you know, a clock or whatever and, and they just run with it. They run with it, <laughs> yes. Sounds like it. And earlier you mentioned, just a moment ago, you mentioned a gala. You said, you know, I came in and I said, well, let's bring in live music. Let's right. change it up a little right. bit. So I understand that you just had a very successful uh, OCAF gala. We did. How, how did it go? It went very well. Our theme was the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And again, we focused on our students' artwork. We had some ceramic pieces that the students had made and all of our centerpieces were made by the students and uh, during the live auction we also sold those centerpieces so everybody got a chance to take a piece of our original artwork home mm -hmm. so yeah we had a good crowd good music and uh, we made some good money for our kids good congratulations thank you so let's talk about the children and for you we've talked about this already in this mm -hmm. interview but just giving you a little more space to talk about why for OCAF, for you, for the board, for the district, why why is the arts you know, so important for children to have access to in at Orchid School District? Well, the arts they address so many. You know, we talk about addressing the whole child. I mean, it's it's collaboration, it's teamwork, it's self confidence, it's. Um, it's academics, you know, it's it's science, it's math. You mix two colors together and what do you get? Mm -hmm. So it combines all of that. It's also, um, it's, um, I'm a big believer that it's, it's um, self-confidence. It just skyrockets mm -hmm. in children. I'm, I've experienced firsthand yes. that I just... Does that make sense it to does. you? Okay. It really yeah. does, and I'm curious, you've shared your own example of, of having the ceramics in, in, in mm -hmm. elementary school and high school really build confidence for you. Right. Have you seen here examples of that in students who experience art and you can just see themselves, just see themselves differently? I have, I have. I, um, we had um, fortunate to meet a young man um, who wanted to be a singer mm -hmm. and never gave up his dream and, and took a barbershop quartet mm -hmm. at Orchid Academy High School and, you know, struggled in some other things, but um, was just adamant he wanted to be a singer and um, never gave up. And he's actually going to school now to study music. Wonderful. And uh, I keep in touch with him. And he... Him and his parents said that, you know, the funding from OCAF made it possible mm -hmm. for him to pursue his dream. Mm -hmm. Academically, it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I also have a grandson who struggles academically but excels in art. He can draw, he can paint, it's incredible. But if you give him a test, it's a real struggle for him. Mm -hmm. What an, what an incredible opportunity to have students identify as somebody who's creative and successful um, and, you know, just able to be able to express their emotion mm -hmm. and their, their thinking through art in, in ways that sometimes they're not able to during the kind of academic Correct. Uh, part of school. So you've given several examples of that, and it sounds like that's really the, the why behind OCAF, mm -hmm. which is really incredible. So... Tell us a little bit about what happens in September in Old Town Orchid. So we have our annual chalk festival, and we have about 1,500 people come out and celebrate with us. So it's one of the ways that Orchid Children's Arts Foundation can give back to the community. It is a free event. Um, we do charge $10 for a box of professional chalk, but everybody gets a square and they can get their creative juices flowing and, and you know, draw on the sidewalks and the streets come alive with color. And we have amazing food trucks, which is culinary arts, mm -hmm. 
tremendous performances by students, not only for, from Orchid Union School District, but other schools as well. So it's a real community celebration. I was able to attend this past fall, mm -hmm. and it was just delightful to see the community come out. Absolutely. And just have a wonderful time, leisurely, it seemed. There was no rush but there were lots of activities mm -hmm. to engage um, with and all the proceeds go to OCAF, my Correct. understanding, which then turns right back into Goes arts right. for students. Absolutely, yeah. and it's very family oriented mm -hmm. too, which is nice, a, a day out with your family to enjoy the arts, to enjoy music, to enjoy good food, other people, your community, you know. Yes, absolutely. So we, we can expect it again coming up absolutely, this fall? Absolutely, Okay, yes. we'll be there. Yes. So I'd love to uh, paint a picture for people who are watching this and, and engaged with you and saying, oh, this is the person behind OCAF. So they might wonder, well, what does a day look like for Leanne Luongo? And are any two days the same? What are some of the activities that you'd say are really behind these events because not every day are the chalk festival and the gala that we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So on a, a typical day, I spend a lot of time doing a lot of research for new grants mm -hmm. to get certain programs funded for the school district. I also spend a lot of time researching and thinking of new ways to raise funding mm -hmm. um, besides, you know, having a gala and our chalk festival and uh, you know um, golf tournament things like that so i i do a lot of research a lot of research yeah. That's and really i important. write a lot of grants mm -hmm. you really dig into all of your development experience yes. but then also current in information as well around grants that might be available correct yeah. yes and do you have a staff no, I don't. You don't. I am the only staff. You're I the only one. The only employee. Okay. Yes. Employee, and and do you have a board? We do have a board okay. of directors. And yes. you have plenty of volunteers that support. We you. have volunteers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Leanne, although you are a staff of one, yes. you really are you know, the executive director, really thinking about leadership um, for the board, for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really needs organization and facilitation. Mm -hmm. So, how? How have you developed your, your leadership skills around being the ED for a, a big nonprofit like yours? Well, I think that uh, my background from the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Clubs of Monterey County has helped me tremendously being in the different core program areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I have leadership skills, I have fundraising skills, you know, development, um, stewardship, all of that has been instrumental in getting me where I am today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you a question about youth and, and your, your opinion or your experience and what you believe youth need to know and be able to do when they graduate from high school and get it into a job. Mm -hmm. That's the question, but I, I want to ask it in a couple ways. One is, as an executive director, you know what it takes to be an executive director. People ha need to have certain skills. Absolutely. Beyond knowing how to fundraise, it's really around people and lots of things stewardship, there. So, stewardship. Stewardship, right? So there's, there's the skills you need as the ED, and then there's the skills that you see as students are, you're working with students in schools. So in either lane, um, bringing it together, the question being, what are some of the skills or things that you believe students need to know and be able to do by the time they graduate high school to be successful, whether they want to be an ED, go to college, and beyond? Well, I think you have to have self-confidence, number one, mm -hmm. in yourself. That's really important. And you have, to be you have to believe in whatever it is you want to do. Um, it doesn't matter if you're going to pump gas or be an executive director. Mm -hmm. If you're good at that and believe in yourself and have the self-confidence, I think you'll do well. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. And let's talk about you as somebody who has had this experience. You already are successful. You, I know that every successful person, anyone you talk to, has had people who've inspired them or been a mentor to them. Um, you've talked about your sister-in-law. But have there mm -hmm. been others that you can share that they've really inspired you and been a mentor for you in your life? I would have to be my father. Mm -hmm. My father was one of my biggest inspirations. My father worked three jobs and went to school to become a t school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up very poor mm -hmm. in the projects, um, but he never gave up and he always told me it's not what you have. It's, you know, what you do with 
what you don't have, basically. Mm -hmm. So he was very kind and caring. And when he became a school teacher, and he saw some students struggling who would maybe be evicted from their home and stuff, he brought them into our home. <laughs> um, though we had little, he brought them in there. But he was truly a mentor for me. What an example of how to treat other people sounds like. Always treated everybody with respect. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter where you came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is now in the East Coast where he was a teacher, sounds Correct. like, right? Yes. Because that's where your family... Dover High School. Dover High yes. School. And what did he do prior to being a teacher? He was a mechanic. Mm. He worked in my grandfather's garage. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I wonder what inspired him to go back to school to be a teacher. Yeah. He loved people. Mm -hmm. He loved making a difference. He loved kids. Yeah. He just, he wanted to do something that, I know it sounds cliche, that made a difference. And he came from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, his father passed away very young. He had to grow up and raise his four brothers and help his mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it was his calling. Well, he clearly had influence on you. Absolutely. And the legacy continues of giving back, of giving back. I mean, look how many children and youth and teens you're impacting through OCAF. It's mm -hmm. really tremendous. It really is tremendous. He'd be very proud. I think he would. Yes, very well, <laughs> very much. So I have a question. This uh, high-powered executive director meets Art. And so I'm curious about how you unwind and if any of that um, meets you while you relax and unwind. So I unwind by taking a walk with my dog. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a rescue dog whom I love very much. What's, what's the dog's name? His name is Dante. Nice. Yes, he's big. He's okay. 95 pounds, but he's big, he's big old baby, and yep. I love to take a walk with him and unwind. That's nice. It relaxes me. That's very good. Yes. Very good. And so we're, uh, speaking of wind, and, uh, we're unwinding. We're coming down to this very, very last part of our interview, and I really want to be able to have you address the community. Um, we have viewers today who are from Orchid, from mm -hmm. the Santa Maria Valley, from n northern Santa Maria, Santa Barbara County they get a chance to meet you. What's a message that you would like to share with the community today? I think the main message is the importance of arts education. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does address the whole child, but beyond that, it, you know, again, it's the self-confidence, it's the feeling, it's, it's uh, pumping up that child, it's, it's giving them the tools and the resources to succeed. It's so important, and there's just, there's just a feeling you get when that child brings you that painting and you know you you hang it on the refrigerator or you have that piece of ceramic that's sitting on the coffee table it's just something very special about it yes. it's it's I guess I'm struggling with finding the right words, but it's, it's empowering. It is very powerful, for yeah. sure. And if we were, walked into your home, would we see ceramics around your... You would see all types of different types of paintings and ceramics, eclectic furniture, <laughs> and yeah. We I, might need to do an interview from your house next yeah, time. Yeah, I have it. some pretty funky stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that too. Uh, Leanne, thank you so much for sharing a bit about you and your passion and the why behind what you do for the Orchid Children's Art Foundation. And we're really so fortunate to have your leadership in this community on behalf of all the children and the teachers in Orchid. I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate you. It's been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Local Leaders.